Puzzles just like this can sell for hundreds of dollars. Today we're going to look at the top 20 most valuable puzzles selling right this minute. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about vintage puzzles just like these right here. Now, puzzles in general don't have to be vintage to be worth a lot of money. Today we're going to show you the top 20 selling puzzles right this very minute that can get you a small fortune. Now, puzzles have been around for a very long time, hundreds and hundreds of years. Now, some companies still make them like they did over 100 years ago. Some of the most expensive are made by just a few companies. This is a Liberty wooden jigsaw puzzle, Fly Hawaiian Air. And it's basically a copy of a poster. But if you look at the pieces, you will see that they're very nicely detailed. They're thick wood, very thick wood. Some of them look like birds, animals, people, characters. A large number of these sorts of very expensive, fancy, very detailed puzzles can also be shaped oddly. They may be shaped like an object. This one happens to be shaped like a poster. And this one here sold for 1200 bucks. Now, Liberty has made a ton of different puzzles. Most Liberty puzzles that look like this with the fanciful, thick pieces will sell for some pretty darn good money. This one here sold for $2,150. Large number of the puzzles are of artwork, vintage paintings, posters, and things along that line. And just like the last one, you can see pieces that are shaped like angels and people, a starfish, dancers, jesters, all sorts of different things. Now, this one came in a tube. Some of their puzzles are sold in tubes like this one here. Now, this one doesn't go as much as some of the ones in the fanciful wooden boxes, but it's still sold for close to 600 bucks. Now, another name is Stave. They have similar puzzle design styles and pieces like the last one we showed you from Liberty. They come in nice boxes. They're usually limited. They have fanciful artwork. Sometimes there's more than just one puzzle in a box as well. This one has a little kitten in it. This one went for $850. Now here's another stave, but this one has dual interest. Like I said, a large number of puzzles that are worth a lot of money are by specific artists. This is James Christensen. His artwork is well collected. He was with the Greenwich Workshop. Large numbers of his puzzles will sell for some phenomenal money, even ones that aren't by Stave. This is probably the top of what his puzzles sell for. His artwork is very unique. Anything with his artwork, in all honesty, will sell also. Books, things along that line. But the puzzles are the most prized pieces that most people will want. Here's a real good example of some of the pieces in the puzzle. Some are actually words, animals, sunglasses. Even some of the imagery makes it look like it's the object that they're showing. And it also sold for over $2,000. And here's yet another stave by Christensen as well. Same artist. This one is based on a sculpture that he did. He did ceramic figures, and that is probably one of the most well-collected pieces by him, other than some of the poster artwork that he has done also. Really fine example. It sold for around the $1,000 mark. Now, Stave, as well as Liberty, are just basically modern-day versions of what they used to do back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. This is a par picture puzzle. There are characters and other pieces inside this puzzle. The artwork's unique, comes in a very fanciful box for the time frame. They're well collected also. They don't go for as much, obviously, as a brand new Stave in mint condition, but they're still highly collected. This one sold for $887. And yet, here's another par picture puzzle. This one's in a unique shape. It's like a die-cut border around the outside. This is typical of the staves as well as the Liberty. It's just a carry-on from earlier puzzles. Most of these sorts happened from the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Here's yet another brand. This is Educa. This is an imported item from another country. These sell extremely well. It has a sealed bag, meaning none of the pieces have been touched. As long as they're all there and they're in excellent condition, most most of these sorts of puzzles can still sell for a lot of money, like this one here that went for over 1400 US dollars. Here's yet another one by Educa. This one has a large number of pieces, sometimes puzzles with tons of pieces, 
massive size puzzles will go for a lot of money. This one's sealed. Sold for over $500. That is a name as well as Stave, Liberty, and Par that I always would recommend looking for for value in puzzles. Now here's another manufacturer, Ravensburger. Large number of Ravensburger puzzles can carry a decent value. Now, many of these puzzles may be discontinued. They only made a limited amount of them. They stopped production. So some of those can go for hundreds of dollars like this one here. This one also has tons of pieces, 32,000 pieces. It's a very large size puzzle. These also weigh a lot too. You'll have to keep that in consideration. Now, here's another artist related one by Keith Herring. 32,000 pieces as well. These are just massive size puzzles. You need a huge area to put these together. It has eight sealed bags to form the entire puzzle. Sold for almost $950. Here's yet another brand, and this is Hia. This is another imported item. It's character style artwork. It's 4,000 pieces in a box. Sold for almost $400. $100. And here's yet another one. This one only has 2,000 pieces. Now the artist who did a large number of these also did some of the magazine artwork for puzzle books and things along that line. So sometimes there's hidden figures and characters in the actual artwork itself. This is a fairly large one also. Sold for several hundred dollars. Here's yet another brand that usually sells for some pretty good money. This is Clementoni and this is an Italian brand. This is 13,200 pieces to this one here. And it has fanciful artwork, probably, I guess, from the Renaissance era, from what I can tell here. Now, like the one I showed in the beginning, this one's by Springbok. Springbok is one of the most prolific puzzle makers in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. They have round puzzles. They've got some octi puzzles that are octagonal in shape. Large numbers of theirs will sell for 50 to 100, 150, 200, 4 and 500 dollars. I've even seen some sell for. This one is sealed, very fancy, fantasy related artwork on this one. This one sold for 425 dollars. And here's yet another Springbok, and this is Pablo Picasso from 1966. Open or not, again, it doesn't matter. As long as it's complete, the box is in good condition. It's still a displayable piece. They can garner some value. This one here sold for 375 bucks. Here's another Pablo Picasso. This is sealed. Now, sometimes the round ones are basically the artwork from a plate. And I do believe this is a Picasso plate is all this is. Most of the round ones will get you some decent money regardless. This one here sold for 356 bucks. Here's another round Springbok. This is King of Kambala. Over $300 for this one. The artwork is very unique. Not many companies created puzzles of this style, this size, this sort of fine graphics until the modern day age. And here's yet another one. This is the story of Joseph. And this one is from a plate. You can see the indentation from the center of it right there. This one sold for over $240. Here's another example of the Octa puzzles like the one I showed you in the beginning. That's the shape of the box. This is a New York City scene. It's by a well-known artist once again. These were sold many times at art galleries, studios, and things along that line. Specialty items, catalogs, say J.C. Penney's or something like that also. This one sold for 180 bucks. Now this next one is by M.C. Escher. Most Escher puzzles that are vintage will sell for some pretty decent money. And this one's by a company named Selegiochi. Now I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but I've seen the name many times on puzzles that sell for a decent amount of money, like this $225 Escher one here. Now a whole other area of puzzles are ones tied to movies, television, superheroes, and things along that line. And this one's from the sci-fi television classic, The Outer Limits from the 1960s, right up along the lines of the Twilight Zone of the same time frame. Now video game puzzles are super hot right now. Most of the ones tied to anything Nintendo, Zelda, even the GameStop modern day releases can still sell for several hundred dollars. Like this one here from Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Here's another one tied to Nintendo as well. And this is Pocket Monsters, an early Pokemon piece from 1998. This one, as you can see, sold for 185 bucks. It is still sealed, never been opened. 
And here's just one last one. Here's a bunch of original Star Wars puzzles. Most of them seem to be sealed. These are from the very first release from the 1977 first Star Wars movie. Classics, to say the least. They sold for thousands of dollars for this collection here. Now, these seldom show up these days, especially certain ones of these. Some of these were only released in limited numbers as well. Now, with many of these, there are variations. The Canadian versions as well as the foreign versions of the very same puzzle will look different. This example with the spiraling circles around it does seem to sell for a little more, as does the larger puzzles. Now, these also seem to be Canadian in origin. They have French as well as English, which most of the 1970s Canadian puzzles had. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. No, that's not the place for a burning cigarette on the edge of a desk. You see why? Should be getting warm about now. Hope you make it. What's this? Uh-oh. Don't go barging into dark closets. Your friends will never believe your story.